Hi guys, Brett here from Hearns Hobbies. And I'm BJ. And we, well we're both from Hearns Hobbies, let's be honest. And today we are doing a super build. This is the R01 from Yokomo. And what does RO stand for? R uh, stands for Rookie. Rookie Off-Road. Yes. And this is the first one. And I believe, and I could be mistaken, this is the first Rookie car that Yokomo have done in the off-road. Yeah? I think so. Yeah, from yeah. my memory, I don't think. And by rookie, done. they mean more of an entry level. That's right, entry racing. level, beginner style. And we just thought that we'd do it, and we're actually going to take it to the track. Mm. We're going to race it, mm. and we're going to sort of do an old school build, and we're going to see if we can't do it with a 540, a 27 turn 540 Johnson motor. Yep. We're going to put a nine step speed controller in there. Mm -hmm. Some really basic hardware. We're going to put just a Metal Gear digital hire servo in there. Yes. And uh, entry level Fly Sky radio. Let's give yeah. it a go. And we're going to go racing. That's it. With the Yokomo Rookie Off-Road. So join us as we start episode one of the build. That's it. All right, let's have a look inside. Jump right. in the box and have a look. What do we got? All right, so I've got a manual here. Ooh, a manual. I bet it doesn't even have Spanish. Probably, it, well, probably doesn't. How do we have it's Japanese? Quite It'll be what? Japanese and English. Beautiful printed. It's yeah. really good that they've started doing both. Oh, there it is. There the is Willy our, Wonka our scuba ticket. pass. That's it. And that saves you, what, about $80? Is it $80 a day to go there? Well, I think it's about 5,000 yen, is it? 5,600 yen. Yeah. So that would be about $60, dollars There you go. Got some stickers. I do love stickers. It's my favorite thing. Stickers. Okay, and we've got a little sheet there. We've got some hot ups. Some option uh, parts on the back. Option parts. Mm. And then we up? get into the build. Okay, so there's a manual and we go step by step, right? Well, we'll see how concise it is because neither of us have ever built one of these buggies before. No, well, we're gonna learn. This is gonna be an Australian exclusive, I wanna say. Okay. On camera anyway. All right, let's have a what quick- are we, What are we greeted with? Oh, let's your, your, get into it. Your plastic molded chassis. I've been- We've Got our bag of fluids. I've been chomping at the bit to get this out of a bag. Plastic uh, chassis Yokomo. And I love plastic chassis because that's what I started racing back when I was a wee lad. Mm. Look at that. Beautiful composite. And it's not just the ABS, like it is a proper no, plastic it's chassis, stiff, isn't it? No? Well, you can see those. I always look at these marks here. You see the, how it's flowed? And I know that's quite a, a stiff type of plastic. You can see how the composite flowed. moving. Yeah, because it gets injected through here. Oh, we've got some ball cups. I'm sure that'll come to fruition later, what that's for. It's yep. probably for the steering servo, I'd say. We've got a wing here. Oh, look at that pre-cut wing. Well, what I didn't mention before was the body is pre-cut. Pre-cut, body, pre-cut We're gonna wing. hose this with one can of paint, aren't we? That's the plan. Got some tyres. Tyres are already mounted tires. up. Boom. Buggy, lots of little bags in one big bag. Yep, there's a huge bag. So they're all numbered. So I'm guessing bag one is the first steps and stuff. And you just move through them, yeah? Oh, more stickers. And what I love about this one, I'm gonna open this now, because this is pretty exciting for me. This has window stickers. Makes it easy, doesn't it? So it has window masks, if you care to mask up the windows. Yep, there they are. So they're, they're pre-cut, so you can just peel these off and do your windows. Or if you've never done a body before, mm -hmm. they give you window stickers. So yes. you don't even have to mask up the windows. Yep. So I think we should do that just to prove the point. Yeah, for sure. Got some oh, there's Velcro. more stickers. Velcro for the body. Oh, the RO stickers. They oh, can there's go. some tools, are there? Is there a tool, yeah. tool bag? There's some, some tools and some hot up options. So this is a... Two and a half? Two? It's probably a two and a half. Looks thick. And then you've got your one and a half and your two in there. I'm just getting it out because I know that we'll need it anyway. Oh, there's some inserts here. Look at that. I've never had a Yokomo spanner before. Mm. Had a few Tamiya ones in my time, but never a Yokomo one. Oh, well, there you go. We've got some diff height adjusters over here. Yep. We'll put this to the side. Yep. Let's go. Let's get and into the, it. The little spanner thing. Yeah. Mm. Turnbuckle spanner. Spanner? Spanner. I do also, though, I'm not going to build it with L-shaped Allen keys. I refuse. I do have our trusty nine steps toolkit here. Okay. I'll so, put a knife here, let's put it over there. So you're not allowed knives, Bede, you know that. Why? How sharp is that nine steps knife? It's pretty sharp. That's probably why he won't let me touch it. <laughs> All right, so what are we gonna start with? 
I don't know, but right, I'm, so I'm tipping bag number here. one. One, the bell crank assembly. Okay, oh. so you need to open bag one. I'm going to put this. Should I put it here? Bag one. And oh, the screws are in each bag. Oh, lately, that makes it easy, lately it? what they've been doing with their competition kits is putting all the screws in one bag. Right. And all the screws are numbered. Oh, so that's right. So you've got to empty them all out. You've got to empty them all out and, and find have them. 10 little containers or whatever yep. and go find them. But this is a much easier way to build a kit. So being the belt crank assembly, so this must have all the front end bits. Okay, so there's a, a couple of steps included in this bag. You get a shock tower. What do you call this bit? The top of the bulkhead, yeah? Yeah, bulkhead. So the shock tower will mount onto there. Now I'm using this sweep. We're using this sweep pit mat here. I love the color. The color, color looks great on camera, but it's also got these molded... Um, well, it's got little partitions, isn't it? Partitions in it, yeah. And it's really good for helping separate and keep your screws and bits and pieces from falling off. And I love it on race day as mm -hmm. well, because it's nice and thick. Have a look how thick it is. Roll up the corner and show the viewers. It does not fly away. Doesn't it? No. Can confirm it does not fly away. Well, that's got to be like six mil. Yeah. The biggest drawback with it is it's quite heavy for a start and it's hard to like roll up. Mm -hmm. It will roll up, but it's hard to put in your gear bag. But it's quite you know? luxurious. It's, it's, a, it's a nice working surface. You drop screws on it, they won't bounce everywhere. No, and you can cut on you it too. And that I'd really recommend it, but... All right. Oh, we saw you cutting on it. What have we got? Well, it's not a cutting There's a mat, shock but... tower. We've got the top of the bulkhead. And then you've got each of those little bags open. So we need to start Are off you with... entertained? I am. We need the rack. The rack, steering rack. Yep. And the bell cranks, left and right. Left and right. We need the three by 12 round headed screws. Round headed screws, three by 12. Yep. Are they it? And then we need some shims. Shims. Four mil shims. We need four of those in total. Four, ah, oh, one four, millimeter shims. Four times four mil Yep. Really thin shims. Yep. And then we need the little, is that what you call the monkey's hats? Hey. These little collar things. Buckets. Hey. I don't know. What? Who calls them monkey's hats? I think that was Panda who called the monkey's hats. Is that, is that what it was referring to? Uh, that was in a Tamir kit. So but was knows? it the same thing? No, don't know. Don't know. Okay. And then we've got the bell cranks and then we need some uh, nuts. Nuts. How many yep. nuts? Two thin three mil nuts. Yep. And a ball stud. Ball eight mil. Stud. Eight mil. And then we're ready to go. Uh, that could be 10 mil. Have you got a part scale there? Can oh. you measure that for me? Yeah, right here. See, that's a beautiful thing about these Japanese instructions. Eight mil. Is that? No, that's too short. That's six mil. Yeah. Right, that's eight mil. There you go. Okay. All right, so shall we start putting together? So we need the screws. I would love to start putting them together. Three by 12s. Okay. So this and a little shimmage. Yep. Goes together. Oh, hang on. We need the balls for here too. Maybe we should do that first. These are six more balls to go into the rack. Are they? Yep. You're telling the story. Wait, well, yeah, these were the six more ones, weren't they? The yep. short ones? So do you want me no, to no, start no. assembling them? Yeah. Is that what's happening? That's it. And which way do they go? So they face forward. That's correct. And there's no washers behind them? No, not going to see here. That's probably a tuning part. Just making sure that it's all nice and straight. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm going to put the manual so where right. I can see it. I'm looking forward to seeing this hit the track. I really think that cars have almost become too complicated. This is a really good step back from a value point of view. Oh, for sure. And this still has the adjustment you need Yeah. for a, um, a racing type It's got all car. the adjustment and all the hot up parts from the more complicated or the more competition focused cars will fit. Yep. Yep. So what am I looking at? So you got your 3x12, you have another 3x12 over there. Yep. And then you put a washer on it. Yep. Or a, oh, here we go. There's one I prepared earlier. Yep. And then we need a... Bucket. Yep, with a shim inside that. 
Well, that goes in from the top. Yeah. Doesn't it? Yeah. So you should put the shim on it first, I think. Make it easier. And that goes over the head. Yeah? Mm. Up to the head. Like that? Yeah, I reckon. And then that goes into... Through the top. The top. And we know that's the top because they're pointing upwards. Yeah. And then another shim. Shimage. That's it. You've already got it there. And what holds it together? I oh, need a one mil spacer. You need two of them. One mil spacers? Yep. You need two of them. So you need one of those on a screw. On a screw? Yeah, on that screw that you put in there. Oh. Yep. Yep. And then that screws into one of the bell cranks. So we've got to make sure you get the correct bell crank. Which side have you got there? So they're telling us to lay them out like this because they're different. Well, of and course they're different. And which one have you got in here? You wouldn't want them to be the same. You got that one, which means we need the one with the two holes in it, which is this one. So... Does it have bearings? I would have thought so. You got bearings there, haven't you? Oh, that's for the big side. You're doing the little side. Sorry. Oh, that's right. Yeah, screws into the end here. Screws in there. Into the end one? Yep. The other one will be for the servo, I'm tipping. And then that'll be done up with a nut on the end. With a nut too? Yeah. Jeez, I don't want that sucker coming apart, do no, they? No, not at all. So you want it to a point where it's tight. But there's still some play, right? So you still want it to be loose. I'm going to put a little bit of Loctite on that. Does it say Loctite? No. It doesn't? No, but a lot of kids don't say Loctite. I'm going to put some on there because... Just a touch so it doesn't come loose. I'd be more comfortable with it. Yep. Because it's only a very narrow nut and I'm not going to put so heaps you, of torque on you it. Got your, your secret applicator? Got my secret applicator. Yep. Put it in the very end there going off the instructions already. Hey, but we've, then you just, we've been into it for two seconds. You're going to use that just to, to nip it up a bit? I don't know that you can say that. Say so what? Nipping it up. Why? Oh, I don't know. Just Is that wrong? Could be. How is it? You tell me. Yeah, it's straight, good. Straight off the gun. Yeah. Look at that. So you want it, you want it nice and loose like that. Loosey goosey. Yep. You got a little bit of rag, I'll just wipe off the excess. Here you go. Thank you. Got Nan's favourite tea towel. That's it. All right, so we're doing basically the same thing on the other end. On the other end? So you got all those little monkey's hats. So I'm going to put this one in. I'm yep. going to put this one in. Yeah. Are they watching? <coughs> and then we'll go ahead and I'll put this one in. So you changing these bases is a way of changing Ackerman, is it? Oh, is there a spacer under there? Mm. Did I forget the spacer? No, you did the spacer before. You only got one spacer left. Here we go. Yeah. Yeah. And same sort of thing, screw it up with a nut on the end. Again, I'll be using the... Um, special applicator. The Loctite special applicator. Now, I don't like using power tools on builds. You wouldn't have seen that from me in the past, and I'm not about to start now. Mm. You have so much more control with your hand, right? Well, it's not, it's very much more a, a tactile sort of feel, isn't it? Mm. Got my special. People are probably cringing watching me do that, aren't they? Watching you do what? Which bit of it? Well, I'm not sure. Is it, is it upsetting you? No. Why, like, why should it upset me? Because the hobby knife, am I like... Oh, how you just waving I'm not around. disrespecting the hobby knife, am I by? Well, I don't think so, it hasn't complained yet. Alright, so just nip it up. There I you go. hate steering bell cranks, but this one has absolutely been lovely. It's been pretty straightforward, eh? Alright, so that's step one, complete. Are you still doing I've stuff? I've even got a better tool. Oh, there's a ball we haven't put in yet. What do you got there? What are you doing? Got the nine steps one. Ah. All right, then we need the uh, the eight mil ball stud. Yep. 
to go through the top here. And that goes through the top. Is there a washer under that? No. Okay. I know on the SO 1.0, we run a wa washer on that. So we'll have to see when we come to do the steering geometry. Mm -hmm. Here we go. You happy with that? I think it's pretty good, isn't it? All right, what's the next step? Next step is bell crank insulation, part two. So still using all the parts out of bag one. Yeah. And we've got a chassis here as well. Oh, already. Okay, so we need, the, this guy. we need the chassis. Yep. We need the bell crank base. Yep. Yep. And then we need the front suspension mount. Front suspension mount. We need two bell crank posts. Yep. The four bearings. And two of the long um, 3x15 countersunk screws. Wow. Oh, there you go. Oh. Oh, wow. These actually got little threads on them. Yeah. Thread. Two. And you said bearings. Yep. All the bearings. How many bearings? There's four. Oh, there is four. I guess the easiest thing to do would be to push the bearings into I'm going to put these ones in the chassis first I think oh yeah yeah now you can right. would lock tight these because they're in an alloy chassis but this is going into a plastic chassis so I won't be using lock tight on there because lock tight mm. in itself can in fact cause damage to the plastic can't it it can and it does say here do not over tighten so you don't want to strip out those holes. It's a new one and a half mil, isn't it? Is it? It's tight. Tight like a tiger. Hey? Don't get in tiger action. Doesn't want to go in. Is it good? It is good. Yeah, it's going in straight. That's what you want. So you're just visually watching it as it's snipping up? Yeah. Yep. Okay. That is some good quality machining. Mm. No play in it at all. No. I'm just, Ooh. just making sure that A, I don't... I thought you are going to stab yourself then. Well, I didn't go through your hand and then end up in my eye. <laughs> <laughs> That's an even better trick. That would be trick. skewered. How's that? Is that any better? Yeah. That is. Okay. So it's a, a more positive fitment inside there is it well just because i'm starting it yeah you want to get the thread just cutting first right yeah and i want to make sure that it's nice and straight because there's not a whole lot of meat on there well that'll still get supported by the bulkhead right? yeah it'll get all clamped in yeah for yeah. sure Oh, the tongue nearly come out then. <laughs> Did you see that? The that concentration tongue. tongue. I know, you can hear it. Okay, so we've got a chassis and we've got some posts on it. Okay, so let's start mounting up the rest. So you might as well get the bearings and put them into the bell cranks, yeah? I reckon that'll be the easiest thing. Into the bell cranks? Yep. And then we're going to need this. This is seal it up on the top. Ooh, ooh. Bell crank base. Like so. So the front suspension mount. Can I offer that over the... Does that feel good? Well, it's tight like a tiger. Is that it? And then this one goes over here. It does. Just goes over the top. With the, uh, the funky shapes. No, the other way around. The other way around, like that. Flipped around. Show me. Ah, oh, the bell cranks in the. Hey, you got the wrong way around. This one. Yeah. Have you done this before? No. Neither have you I. built one of these before. I thought you have a better idea. So you just got to flip those around. <laughs> it's been a while. I'm just following you. That's it. Well, this is the joys. Okay, so that's that's the part that clamps it all together. All right, so that goes in here. And on the SO 1.0, that was actually all alloy. Was it? Yeah, Everything? That, that bell crank. All right, so and you see how that's well. 
quite a firm fit. Oh, just press it in. That was nice. How is it? That is some quality injection molding. Okay, so that's there. And then we need to screw in the front suspension mount. Yeah. So we'll get our three by fifteens there. Yep. Put those in here. And there's a couple of locating points here. Is that adjustable? Does it have like a zero and a plus thing? It's got a plus on it. What's yeah, on zero. Side? There's zero. zero. And then plus, plus one. one. Roll center adjustment. Yep. Nice. How good is that? So we've got the zero pointing out. That's what we're supposed to have. That's it. Need now I probably need some tools to screw through here. Well, you're not going to use your teeth. Hey? No. No. Here you go. All right. So where's that go? Yeah. Does it look right? Oh, I'm just screwing into that that bulkhead Into thing, the yeah? posts. Yep. Those posts were. Yeah. Post where what? How does it feel? Feels does pretty it, good. Feels good. Well, you know, when you screw into plastic, you can, you can feel the quality of the plastic. It's really when you work on it once or twice that you really get a good feeling for it. Mm. So is, that that, positive. is that that page done? I think so. Note position. Yeah, I noted done. that. You noted that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Made sure about that. I love that. I love that you noted that. All right, so that's tight. And again, I'm not over tightening because I want to be careful into plastic. Well, the last thing that we want to do is be stripping it. All right, so there we go. That's nice and firm. Firm? Yep, and we've got our bell crank there, moving nicely. I'm going ahead to the next step. Well, there's hardly any play in that, isn't it? It's really good. There's none. I'm going right, so what are you? The, I'm going ahead to the next bulkhead step. Bulkhead installation. Oh, you're still going to need this, right? So I'm putting the shock tower onto the bulkhead. Yep. And that's really nice. Usually it's a carbon fiber piece on the, the SO kit. Mm -hmm. So this one being a plastic, and I reckon the plastic's awesome. Mm -hmm. No, my first race cars were all plastic. Well, it's quality plastic. You know, it's not just some floppy stuff. It's really stiff, look at that. Stiff. Stiff. Hard. Not movable. Not movable. <laughs> That's right. What else have we got? Talk to me while I'm doing these screws up. Well, we got. have we got our stuff? What stuff? <coughs> so there's the upper... Um, so what I'm doing here link. is I'm actually nipping it out yep. to that point, and then I'm undoing it half a turn and then going again, just to ensure that it is all the way it home. Is. Right. Because if you just keep doing it up, you can stretch all the threads. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And you got to be careful too with um, countersunk screws because they've got that angle. If you over tighten them, it's, it stresses the plastic on the top. I'm, as well. I'm stressed. <laughs> Are you now? I am so stressed. All right, so you're putting in the um, the shock mounting. Um... In the middle ones? Yep. 22 mil. Is it? Shock mounting screws. 22 as it is. And then, and then, then a flat nut. nuts. Yep. And then nut to. Oh, I'm so excited by those flat nuts. Are you? Why? Because they will like pinch it together. They're going to make this thing so strong. Flat nuts is a special thing, don't you reckon? Normally they're really chunky. Chunky nuts? Yeah. I like my nylocks. Nylocks are huge. Yeah, but they give that whole anti rattle feel, don't they? Oh, because of the plastic there, yeah. absorbing the, just like a the vibration. It's like a ring of security, <laughs> isn't it? <laughs> I've never thought of it that way, and I'll never forget that. Yeah. Yeah, a ring of security. The ring of confidence. I'll have to um, remember that and, and quote you. All right, so that's in the center hole of the, um, the shock tower mount. So you've got three holes to choose from. What else is there? That's a bit risque. What's that? <laughs> <laughs> All right, so after that, we're going to do your um, upper arm mount. Okay, so it's going to have the... Um, the upper camber mount. Yeah, the, the eight mil balls with one mil spaces under them. And these are, I'll be honest, these are my pet hate. Which bit? 
these camber links. Is it? Why? Which bit and of I'm it? I'm going to say that because they've got these flat nuts. Yeah, they captured flat nuts in it. Yeah, but they're not... When you try and repair your car at the track... Yeah. ...and you forget they're not captured, next minute, you got nuts on the floor and they're... Have you super glued them in? Uh, no. I would. We should. So, captured nuts that aren't captured tight, yeah. Yeah. Because it's yeah, quite easy to forget, It's always when right? you're doing a repair or something. Yes. So these ones here. Do you want some glue? Have we got some glue? Yeah, I'll get some glue. I'll get it. Are you? I'm right here. All right, okay. Right next to the glue. Oh, I'll find the glue. Glue's in the glue Nan, department. Nan, where's the glue? All right, so we need these thin nuts here. Here you go. There's a freshie. Is it? Freshie. Oh, do you want, don't want that one? Oh, it doesn't matter. We'll use sure. this one. You sure? Yeah, it's here already. Yeah, but there's a blue one over there that might be good. Yeah. Oh, blue one's really thin. Okay, either way, you can either use the thin stuff, which we're about to use, <laughs> or you can use the thick stuff, which I was about to open. Either one will be good. Now, the thin one, I actually prefer to put the nut in first and then drop a little bit into it. And how am I going to make that straight? Let's push this in straight. These actually feel tight. I don't know if we'll need that. No? I right. think these are actually captured. All right. If they're captured, I'm happy. I did like your point though. It's a handy little tech tip. But I now, have I had would, it I would normally use a screw to pull these through. Because the alloy ones, the optional ones, the whole thing is threaded. Right. Now, I would suggest getting a screw just to pull these through to get them properly captured because it is, they are loose at the moment. They actually need to be pulled through pulled in. into the plastic so they'll be actually captured. So I'm going to put a short screw in there. Yeah. And just pull it through. How easy is that? And that's in, is it? That's in. In like Flynn, buddy -o. Okay. Excellent. And then you just got to do the other side. Well, there you go. So they're properly captured in here. So you, you don't need say, any glue. You can't say incident. You, you sound like a villain. What? When you say excellent. 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 Yeah, very good. How about that? Does that, does that sound right or does it still <laughs> sound like a villain? All right, so we've got our captured nuts and they're actually captured now. And they are pressed into place. That's it. See? They're not going to fall out. So you don't have to worry about that. Not right? for the moment. No. But if you've got the aluminium ones, glue <laughs> the them in. Yeah. Okay, so the this is directional, right? Got to make sure we don't get them the wrong way around. So it is yeah. marked with an S. Now we also need the um, the ball studs, the long ones, with a one mil spacer, and then they'll be screwed into the middle holes. Middle holes. Middle holes. And then we've got our bulkhead, which we've already prepared here. Is it your middle or my middle? Or if you average it between both of our middles, I think you'll get it right. All right, I'll put it in the middle, middle. Middle, middle. The middle of both of us. There's only three holes. <laughs> There's only three holes. There's no need to get emotional. No, I'm not emotional. I am. I get over it very quickly. <laughs> All right, so you've got your upper arm mounts pretty much done, yeah? All right, so you just tighten those up again. And again, being careful not to over tighten because you don't want all those threads to strip out. And they're not going to rattle apart, I can promise you no, that. that's right. So when we're looking at this, it is asymmetrical. So you do want to make sure you get the right way around. So they do have this S mark right here. And this S mark is facing the inside of the chassis. So as indicated there. Goes under and the bulkhead fufa. There. That's a technical word. Technical? Fufa. Fufa. Next to the Henway. Okay, so that gives me out here. Have you checked okay, the so Henway lately? Who? The Henway. What Henway? Have you checked it? What? It's about one and a half kilos. <laughs> the hen. Depends on the hen, doesn't hey? it? I didn't say cock, I said hen. Uh, all, right, all right, so we're all gonna, we're gonna hold it all together now. Have, all right, you, not so heard of, have you not heard of the hen way? Checking the hen way on your race car. No, I haven't. Well, you can use that one, it's a takeaway. Is it? People are confused. All right. And they go, what's a hen way? And you go, one and a half kilos. <laughs> So over here, we've got our bulkhead is gonna to go together. Not sure if you can see, but quite cleverly, it's got a cone at these zoom points. Zoom in, baby. Zoom in. You got the zoom ring there, I have, use I it. Have. 
Do I have to focus oh, it? Get, get, get it crisp. Right there. Can you see that? It's like a nipple. So there and there. <laughs> Did I get away with that one? Nope. Didn't I? Okay, and the great thing is they're locating so that this part fits in perfectly. Don't forget this bit. No, so that's quite important, right? Okay, so S part facing in on the chassis. Yep. And then we've got the bulkhead. Plastic fantastic. Yep, going together. And that should go into here, shouldn't it? Yep, under the steering posts. There we go, oh. so they're sliding into place. Did you see that? And the long screws go at the rear. Yep, so the long the screws, screws at the front. are the, what are they? By 15s? 18s? Yeah, through by 15s. That was a good guess. And the through by 8s go through the front. Oh, what are you doing here? I've, I've broke it. <laughs> I was trying to do three things at once and oh, I yeah. looked away. You want me to hold it? I'll hold it in place. You found it? It sort of slides forward. There we go. All right, there we go. I'll hold it together. Yeah, long screws, that's pretty decent size, isn't it? I mean, these bulkheads are supporting and creating all the strength the in the front, front end. The front of the car. Mm. Have I told you how good these nine steps drivers are? I may have heard you say it, but I haven't heard you lately. I absolutely love them. And they got the nicest knurling. It's mm. really supple, but it's not too rough. Last it's supple. Was, supple. Like it's yeah, a, so it offers grip. It offers grip, but it's not but like it a doesn't, mine. It doesn't tear into you. No, that's right. It doesn't give you calluses. No. Oh, oh, you got the power technique going on. Well, you can't really over talk it doing it like that. No. Well, you can't see, but from here, I can see that they've got a little bit more room to go. Yeah, I just like to do something like this up evenly. Yes. Especially with a long screw. Well, I always do it too. You know, when you're doing box assemblies like this, where you got four screws, you just want to make sure you talk them up around about the same time, right? That's right. So there's no chances of it actually getting warped, say, or twisted out of. And make sure shape. that everything's located properly in its dowels and. Yes. You good? That is the front end, my friend. Wow, look at that. You like that? All right, so we got our steering. How good is it? Steering is nice and smooth. And no play, look at the free play. Yep. None. None. That's what we want. Okay, we're starting on that, three now, which is a rear suspension arm assembly. So we'll get this and we'll pop it aside. Watch out. Oy. That was not a religious uh, pun either. Hey. And I was talking about the amount of slop in it. So what are you doing here? Where? Look at the rear arms. I can't see any rear arms here. No rear arms. You don't get them. They're optional extras. <laughs> well, the arms. I need the arms. No rear arms, Paige. What do you mean? We're not having this conversation again. You said bag three. I said step three. <laughs> oh, like a child. Put all this stuff away. Lucky there's not a whole heap of no, screws no, just everywhere. Just put it over there. It'll be safe. It'll be safe. Just over there. Do you remember which one? I like all the right. side cutters. You like them? Yep. All I've right, lost, so what do you got there? You got I've bag lost, two. I've lost my favorite. See, bag two contents, step three. I've lost my favorite green pliers though. What do you mean? Where'd they go? I don't know. Oh, I, should I, I chop these? I blame Tony Gray. Chop, chop. Please do. Not there. Just kidding. That was intense, wasn't it? It was. Hey? Excuse me. Was that intense? Yeah. I'm going ahead and I'm opening all these parts. I don't care what you say. Okay. Do it. These bags are really nice. You like them? I, I really do actually love the quality of this kit. Now with, with the kit, are there parts that are used on the comp cars? Uh, yeah, all of it. Oh, all of it? Yeah, Except yeah. for the parts that have molded in the plastic? Yeah. So the whole design and geometry the and all that? The whole design and geometry. So all these bits? Yep. Oh, really? These are off the comp car? Yep, these are all off the comp car. Right. They've just replaced some carbon fiber pieces right. for molded plastic, some right. alloy pieces, but it's fully ball raced. It's got the same quality, I want to say it's Japanese steel. Yeah, you can say um, that. It comes Japanese, out of Japan. Yeah. 
So it's got all the same hardware, the same ball and the same beautiful hinge pins. And you can tell by that steering bell crank, mm. absolutely amazing engineering well, and execution. Well, there's a bit of a butcher cut in this one. That's okay, I'll forgive you. Let's go. All right, so where do we go? Okay, so they're marked right and left, okay? And we'll do this so we know what we're we got going short, on about. Short one. So what do we got there? So are those hubs, are they the same left and right? These, these are hubby hubs. Hubba da, hubba da. So they are the same left and right, yeah? Yeah. Okay, it, so we're going for the... Is it a mil and a half spacer under there? It is a one mil. One mil. Oh, one mil spacer with classic, a eight mil ball start, so a long classic, ball start. Classic Brett, just going at it. Hell for leather. Now, funnily enough, it doesn't use the... Doesn't use what? Doesn't use the longest link. I half expected it to use the longest suspension link. Make it more forgiving. This hey. car is going to be on fire. Not literally, but... I don't want it on fire. I want to be able to drive it. don't want it melting. I promise you it won't melt. It won't melt? No. Okay. Plastic Fantastic. What are we going to call it? What do you mean? I don't know. It's got a name. The car needs a name. Oh, you didn't mean a nickname? A row. A row. Row? What? Row. Yeah. Um, so right. we need the hinge pins. So we need the outer. Inner or outer? <coughs> outers. Outers are a bit of short ones. Yeah, I know, I'm getting there. Yeah? Okay. All right, and we need the little tiny capture screws. So we need four of those. So I might as well screw in one capture screw. Slide in the pin. Yep, and then tighten it up. So what are these, one and a half? Should yeah. I do that? You can do that. That may just, I might need to get, oh no. Yeah. I was gonna oh, say, I you. might need to get a more worn tip but that tip seems okay I've got one too oh, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm having a bit of FOMO really? I've captured from both ends yeah classy double capture all right so then we got this part here does it have a wheelbase spacer in there wheelbase spacer no no the hub goes straight in yep keeps it simple I guess Keeps it simple, keeps right, it strong, so we'll keeps it straight. In, and then we'll just seal it up on the other end with this other capturing. Did you screw. feel how nice that hinge pin went in? That mm -hmm. was sensual. Was it? Yeah. I'm enlightened. Because there was there was no there was no grabbing? There was no grab, there was no swearing. No. And just this is what we want, right? I've got a four hundred tone weight and look at that play. That's what we want. It's like Mother Teresa. None. <laughs> <laughs> no, I wasn't expecting no, that. You weren't expecting no, that? No, no, no. I thought there was going to be something a bit more educational or intellectual, but it wasn't. None. All right, so what do we get done there? Oh, so we're done step three. Well, Is that good? We? Used on page 15. Oh, okay. So we're a bit... That's the shock nut. Yeah, okay. Make sure we don't... I'm going to put that up there. Make sure we don't lose those. All right, so we're going to change. I'm going to put those right up there. All right, so what have we got now? So we're oh, on to we're gonna put in the step, rear. still on step three. Okay, so we're going to be attaching the rear suspension onto the chassis here. Oh, and look at these blocks. These are, again, these are all machined alloy on the, the full top level cars. These ones, plastic. Right. I love that. These, this has made my day. I'm glowing. Can you are see you? it? Can you see it? Okay, so I reckon we'll, we'll screw on the rear mount first. The D block. You've got the chassis. It's a bit awkward. I don't want, want, do want to do the old reach around on camera. Oh, why not? I was hoping you would. How do you know which one's which? Oh, this one's this. Is that the one? Got a bit of a rear bumper there. All right, so that goes on a particular way, yeah? So that's asymmetrical. So that goes on this way. Oh, that's a C block. Is that a C block? Yeah. All right, so let's screw that in. So that's screwed in with three by eights. Why oh, is that for me? Thank you. Did you just take a screw away? You might have to reassess those screws. Oh, what's that? They're three by eights. Are the other ones three by sixes? Three by tens? Three by tens, yeah. So no, this is a three by, by eight? Th yeah, that's a three by ten. That's a three by eight there. Oh, is it? Okay. It's been a little while since I've... Well, they're the same thread, that's right. Fred. Fred's got nothing to do with it. This is pure Fred. skill. How do you know Fred's any good? Hey, he's a man. 
most of the time. Are you there? I'm getting there. Can you feel it? I'm feeling it. So I'm just holding it in place with my finger there. So you hear that? You hear that? Yeah, to it. Now that tells you how much glass is in there. How much because How much grr? Mm, because the plastic itself is not giving. It's not stretching. And that's actually the resistance onto the, the screw's threads. Resistance is futile. <laughs> there we go. All right, we're in. Okay, what do we need now? The D block. Oh. Okay, so you get your hinge pins and all that already on it. Much like myself, I'm unhinged. Oh yeah? You got the rear bumper bar there. Rear bumper bar? Yep. Okay, so the screw goes through, hang on, where's this go? Yeah, the rear bumper oh, bar. I'll go through underneath. Under the D block. Okay. The artist formerly known as D block. And then, what are these? These are the 3x10s. Three three by by there you go. How does that I look? can't believe we've got this much done already. Why? It seems I'm, so effortless. It's a Yokomo. You've, you've not, obviously you got no not one of these built, screws? You've not built a Yokomo. Not for a long time. Lately. What do you want? Another one of those three by tens, that's it. Sorry, I was on a different wavelength. You were, weren't you? We got one and we got twos. I'm um, classic Brett, just three steps ahead in a mess, in a hot mess. Hot mess. Oh, you can feel it. Don't think, feel. Or you'll miss all the heaven we go we. <laughs> That's what Bruce says. Don't, I Bruce don't, who? Don't think his name was Bruce. Wasn't there that movie they like, called me Bruce? Have you ever seen that? Call you Bruce. <laughs> Do they? No one calls me Bruce. Don't they? No. There we go. That's Probably because that's not your name. You have a look at that on camera. I'm gonna go ahead and get these. How's that? How's the slop in the play? Well, there's a little bit here. If we really want to get rid of it, we could probably put a really thin shim in there. Now, I say we run it and then we shim it. Yep. Because everything will probably move, right? Yeah. So we'll just leave it as it is. Okay, so what are we doing now? I'm, so you're doing the upper doing mount the, for the rear. So the camber like a, link. So it's like a bulkhead type thing. And I've yeah? put the. The washers in, the camber link spaces oh, okay, for yes. the roll center adjustment. Yes. And they've got nice big 12 mil threads there, which is really nice. Um, and then that slots into the rear bulkhead unit, which is this one here. And that faces up. Oh, wow. How that, wow. Like slots together, it's like a Gundam. Isn't it? Pretty cool, huh? Hmm. So that goes in there. Yep. And then we got this piece here. Oh, is that holds it all together? Yeah. Is that right? Yeah. Something like that. Something? Something like that. Yep. Yeah? Yeah. Why is that there like that? That's weird. I'm trying to work out. So this one goes here like this. This is yeah. like a spacer. Yeah. Must be a wheel, must be a slightly different wheelbase. I'm thinking. Oh, why? Because it's different to the other cars? Yeah. And then the other screws come down from the top. Right. Oh, big screws. Bug. If you're in New Zealand, that's how they would say it. So we're making sub-assemblies. So that's not actually going to go on the chassis yet. No, this is for page seven. Yep. So we're up to this point right there. Because that goes through the gearbox housing. Yep, and again we're going to do the assembly for the shock tower and then that will be put aside. And then we're going to get into doing the diff. So what's next? So next part is we're going to start building the... That the, is good, looks really solid. Building the rear shock tower and the wing mount. Oh, the camera's too far out. So what parts do we need? Are we out of parts or have we got more parts? So it's still in bag three. We bag. opened bag three, yeah? Uh, luckily I opened that one earlier. All right. Okay, so we need a shock tower. Oh, it's got the LD box. My personal favorite. Is it? Yeah. What are you so looking for? I was looking for the nippers. There you go. These, these nippers have seen better days, Beach. Have they? What do you mean? Where's my nine steps ones? 
No? You give me this inferior god hand one. What do you mean? Where's the rest of the bits? I need the wing mounts. Wing mounts? Yeah, are they there? They might be in the wing mount bag. Oh, is there a wing mount bag? Oh, here we go. What are we looking at? Well, there's some gears and stuff in there too. Good to see you got the scissors. These are safer. Are these, they? these are child friendly. Where's my screws is? All right, so we've got wing mounts. Wing mount there, wing mount there. There's a bunch of screws here too. Have you got oh, screws there? Oh, there's some there? more cams. Yeah, I've got some screws in. So here's the wing support. So we need that. And then these are the, the wing washers. We probably don't need these yet. So we'll probably just park those aside. Park those over here. And these gear cans, probably don't need them yet. Park them over here, because they're a bit different. We don't need the idler gear. All right, so we've got all well, the gear. What do we need? What's this? This and the shock tower. So... You want to do the, um, we need a really long screw. So it's yep. three by 22s, round headed. I'm just trying to figure out which way this goes. This way, okay. Round head? Round head. Like me. Screw them through the middle, middle hole. Middle hole. And again, it's going to be finalized. Your middle or, or my middle? Uh, my middle. With a thin three mil nut. Oh, go nuts. Go uh, nuts. These screws here, what are these for? What's what for? These. That must be for the wing buttons, I reckon. Yeah, we'll put those in so we don't lose them. How good are wing buttons? They're great, aren't they? How good are wing are you, mounts? Are you, for, are you for painted wings or clear wings? Painted wings all the way. Why is that? Because it just looks better. It's all about the looks. I love painted wings because, again, when I started racing, uh, we did have clear wings with lots of stickers. Mm -hmm. And then we had, I, I used to use RPM wings. RPM Not, wings? Yeah, nylon ones, because you couldn't break them. Oh, yes, I remember hey? those. Do you remember yeah. those? Well, that's a bit like they like eight scale, eight scale. Right? Yeah, that's right. Well, you can make came out with model wings too, remember? Um, and now the Lexan wings, I don't know. I don't care for clear wings. Hmm. And I, I think the I think totally they, lose their shape. I think they help help me see the car on track as well. Like I was going to say When that. they're bouncing around, and because off-road tracks are on ours mm. like grass and infields and especially me when I'm driving through the infield or mm. <laughs> looking for my car off in the distance when it's come off the track painted wing can make all the difference sometimes you'll be poking at the top of those little that's right little weeds so I never have um you know oh it's height adjustable as well I love it you like height adjustable I do so where are we going we're going to put on the wing mounts going to put on the wing mounts yep so Four, the shocks, three by twelve. The shocks face forward, and these go here. Three by twelve button heads. Three by twelve button heads. That's it. Is that what we're looking at? That's it. And then, is there a spacer plate? I think we need. It. How much? What is this thing? Knowing where we're going to run this car. So this is a wedge. Yeah, and you can put it on a couple of different ways for different rake of the wing, different wing. Mm -hmm. Angle, knowing where we're going to run this car, it's actually going to have its debut in about three days' time. Right. I can't wait to share it with the world. I think it's going to be a good thing. This could revolutionise one tenth off road racing in Australia. I think it will do. Hey, did you hear the news last week? The news last week? No, what was it? Was it good? The 2025. World titles, IFMA off-road world titles. Yeah. Being held in Australia. Are they? Yep. I think I saw stuff like that on the so live. So if you watch this, if you watch this video in five years time, why not be so relevant? <laughs> the wars would have passed. Hey, what well, is the thing about our videos? Our legacy, they last forever. That's right. Just keep looking back and back. Using them as reference. To do better work next time. <laughs> <laughs> Which doesn't pan out in my case. Oh, loosey goosey up and about. Well, the idea is there. Just doesn't sort of come to fruition sometimes, is it? So you're just going to stick it in there. There you go. Where's my wing buttons? I haven't cut them out yet. Oh. What? I just like making that noise. And then you've got these ones here. Have you had my new mic? Oh, they're not 3x10s. 
Are they? Are they 3.10s? Oh, well, they are 3.10s. They're the ones you want. I'm going to put these in here because it feels... Well, it makes sense to keep it all together, doesn't it? It holds it all together. Yeah. You have to do them all up tight. No. But that way, when it comes to screwing on the wing... Mm -hmm. We're going to get this painted today. What? Get it painted. And next we've got the diff. Diff! The what's, diff. what's diff? But the diff's already assembled. Look. And it's a gear diff in this. Now, people might not associate a, a dirt car with a gear diff, but I like it. And I think the reason that Yokomo have done that is for durability, reliability, and ease of servicing. So you got all these. So you got the full instructions on how it goes together, but it actually comes assembled from the factory. Have you got your one and a half mil there? I have. Because does it have oil in it? I'm wondering if it's got oil in it. I doubt it. Let's chop it open. Where's your chopper? Are you allowed to use this one? Oh, probably not. Here, look. I've got yeah. the child, child safe ones here. You'll be able to feel it if it's got oil in it. No. Wow. I it's can't not going to strip, is it? I can't believe that they've... Um, I'm going to have to zoom right in here. I well, can't you're going to have to move it tighter. I can't believe that they've assembled it for us. Let me get that really focused. Do you know who's oh, gonna, look at that. You know who's going to watch this Goody with great... Uh, with this video with great pride. Who? Goody. Is he? Yeah. Why is that? Uh, he loves his gear diffs. So how many screws we got there? Four? Is it four? It is four. What sort of oil are you going to put in? The kit oil. It says 5,000. Yep. I'd believe that. Would you? Now I love this because it's so robust. Well it. they're tough right? Yeah, hmm. and if you're just going out there, this is intended for a first time race or whatever, you don't want to be buggering around rebuilding your ball diff every 10 batteries, do you? No, that's right, and these are all fully sealed, right? These are all fully sealed. Yep. Have a look at so that. You can see the gasket there. Metal gears, it's got the gasket. Yep. I love that they've assembled it. I still can't figure out exactly why they've assembled it, but they've assembled it nonetheless. Yeah. And you don't need to do any work. No. So pass me the 5,000 weight oil, please, Beach. Over here? Yeah. That'll be 5,000 right there, the one with the label that says 5,000. 5,000. 5, 5K, in the other speak. There you go. See it, how thick it is. Thick and globulous. Globulous. Can you call it globulous? I've never heard of that word being used before, but it sounds pretty funky. See, how much are you going to put in here? Because with diff greases, if you put in too much, you can get hydraulic locking. Yeah. Now, generally... Because bear in mind that that's got to seep in there, right? With, with, because it's so thick, yeah. With our on-road cars, we actually weigh it. You know that? Oh, I see. But generally, if you go to the cross pins yeah. in, a, in a diff, in your yeah. off-road, that'll that's be enough. fine. Okay, so the center. Because it's actually not... It's the, the gears paddling through the oil... So the where resistive. The, where the movement is, the sheer strength of the oil, it's not right. actually the hydraulic locking that you want. No, so that's what you've got to be careful, right? Because if you do overfill it or hydraulic locking, it won't give you the, the setting you want. And it will just leak anyway. Yes. Because the volume of the oil does actually change. Feels about right. I was hoping So, so you're just might. rotating that just to let it settle in. That's not rotating. I was hoping it might, but it's not. Oh, going deeper? Yeah. Okay. So where are we at now? You're just adding a little bit more? Yeah. Let me see. I don't think that's quite focused right. Oh, well, it's focused now. Where is it? Where, where is it? There it is. See how much you got in there? I've just covered the cross pins. Right. I'm just manipulating it a little bit. Just so it settles? Just to try and settle it, but yep. without just getting a load of air in there. Yeah. Now, if you were really fussy, like you could do it and leave it overnight or put it in a vacuum pump or whatever. Um, but for what we're doing- Don't have that patience. So you're just gonna drop that in there? But for what we're doing, yeah. And the reason I drop it in there is to make sure that it gets all nicely meshed. All the gears are timed up. Yeah. And you see how the oil sort of moves up a little bit because it's taking up a little bit of volume. And I always put the gear in straight yep. because that will usually correlate to 
on the cross pin here mm. so you can tell exactly where the pin is on the out drive. Right. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Makes it easier to, to marry. Yeah, to marry it all up. Yeah. So I know that that pin is in line with my out drive. Mm -hmm. It's always a little bit tricky to do it on camera and it's going to make a fool of me. Is it? But it locates here yeah. into the dowels. Yes. So they're there to hold down the, um, the center pins on those yeah. spider gears as well. Yeah, to hold it all together. That's a really strong little diff. I'm really happy with that. Mm. I'm going to go ahead and seal it up. Seal it up. And I've moved it, haven't I? Have you? Yeah. No, Mary? Not yet. Not while I'm on camera. That's in? That's in. I heard it go click. And that's all you want. It shouldn't be any harder than that. Mm -hmm. Especially with this Japanese quality engineering, it should just piece together. Yep. Now the biggest thing that can happen is you can actually put too much diff oil in yep. and it can go into these tiny little screw holes. Yeah. Now the biggest problem with that is, is that the oil has nowhere to go mm. and it's too thick to come out. So you not actually end up doing your screws up, you actually end up stripping the casing. Ah. That old chestnut. So that's why it's really important not to overfill your diff. Yep and marry it up before you put the screws in. So this is again where we're talking about doing it like four screws. I'm gonna try and tension them up. Evenly. Yeah. So I've got them all in there. The, the gearbox surfaces are mated. Mm -hmm. I'm just gonna pull it down until it stops. You can see I'm just using like the palm of my hand yeah. and two fingers on the bit. Yeah, so it's gentle. So it's nice and gentle. There's no reason I need to be having a handful on that um, hex driver. Yeah, very nice. Well, that was quick, wasn't it? So it gives you an in indication here about where to top it up to. And now that all four of them are, so I'm just gonna undo it like half a turn. Yep. And then nip it back up. Yep. And then I'm gonna go across. Yep. Do the same thing, half a turn, and do it back up. And then I'll go to the one next to it, undo it half a turn and do it back up. And that should be as easy as that. Now the one opposite. Yep. Well, that's it. That's it, we are done. All right, so what's it feel like? Give me a feel, give me a feel. Don't think, feel. Oh, wow. Well. Should be nice. Should be a bit globulous. And they will run in a bit. Diff's always run in a bit. You know that from eight scale racing? Yes. Because the, the gears actually, like they polish up. Yes. And you can run them in and do all sorts, but in the spirit of this car and this build, let's not br blueprint it, let's get it on track. Hmm. You know, and it's perfect for the first time builder. How easy was that? Hmm. Ball diffs can be quite challenging. It can be. Um, even to experienced people, they can be very challenging. That's true. Well, our next step is actually putting the gearbox together. So this is a lay down style one. Lay down style, yeah. LD means lay down dirt. They right. have another gearbox case called LC, right. and that's laid down, down carpet, carpet. Right. and that moves the f motor further forward in the chassis mm. and uses a bigger idler gear because this poor little idler gear puts up with a whole heap of hurt yeah. on the carpet. So it's like double the size oh, right. for the carpet box. Right. Oh, that makes sense. Spread the load a bit. Huge fun. Okay, so we're going to need a few extra bits and what pieces. What do we need? Eh? Oh, look at the... This is the alloy. It's not like cheap and steel. That is the oh, quality the alloy lay shaft from mm. the competition models. Yes. They haven't cheaped out there at all. Quality Japanese bearings. Yes. Huge fan. Okay. So we've got the five by tens throughout the gearbox. Okay. On the, on so the lay shaft and yep. on the idler. And on the idler. It's like Teflon coated. The hard anodizing. These ones. No. Oh, super smooth. So smooth. Yes. Now, I don't know if the instruction calls for it, but I'm actually going to use mm. a little bit of grease in this gearbox. Okay. Well, it doesn't say you to use any grease. So we've no. got- And you can put it together dry, but I like to use a little bit of Nan's Secret Salt, a bit of mayo. It's not mayo at all. It's XTR Lithium Grease. Right. And I'm just gonna put that on very liberally on the gears when it goes together. Okay. So well, we've got our gearbox halves. Yep. Okay, so we're just gonna put this together now. 
Okay, so we've got our we've got this bit. This goes over here. Whoop. That happened to you before, didn't it? What's that? The bearing popping out. Ah, oh, it's beautifully. It's so. Okay, so we've got this. And now we've got the idler gear that drops into here. So this is a classic three gear design, yeah? Yeah, been around since, I want to say the stealth gearbox, but that could be inappropriate. But definitely that's... Yeah, very nice. No? So when are you going to put the grease on? Are you going to... When I get it all installed. So right, okay. I've gone ahead to the, I'm going to turn the page. Well, we're going to have to get some of those, um, those inserts in here. For change the gearbox height. And here's the guy. Which one does it recommend to put in from the box? So standard. Which one is this? What's it say there? Is that a two? Zero plus one millimeter plus two millimeter and plus three millimeter. So I. So it says to put in the two. Put in the two, and the two is facing up or down. The two is facing up. Two is facing up. Yeah. Yep. And these are beautiful little cams. Hmm. And what they do is they adjust the diff height in the gearbox, yep. which doesn't actually change the gear mesh, but it does, however, change where your dog bone or your drive shaft position sits in the rear. And it changes the, so the you really traction want, under power. Yeah, so you really want your car, well, it depends on what you're doing, but if it's a really low traction track, you want the, the rear maybe to pull down right. to get more weight. Yep, and what do you do then? Central. You put it higher. So you'll have it, um, yeah, you'll have it higher so it pulls the car down more. Yep. Because it'll try and straighten the drive shafts. Yes. And that's the natural uh, dynamic motion of the drive shaft under load. So you see it's got two and one written there. Yep. So that means it's, it's got a, it's sitting up higher. Yep. On the two. Yep. Okay. And zero and three is the other adjustment. Okay. So that's why I should say the two's going to be facing up. Oh, I think we went a bit too far. We haven't actually screwed it together yet. We need to screw the gearbox together. So you'll probably want to grease up your... No, no. Oh, you grease that up later? Okay, so to screw up the gear case, we need a 3x15 and a 3x8. A 3x15 and a 3x8. Yep. And they come through this end. Over here? Yep. So 3x15 on the bottom and a 3x8 through the top. Two millimeter. Two mil. It's a good looking gearbox, isn't it? Great looking gearbox. Very, very effective. And is that right? Yep, 3 15 in the back. Wow, nice. Nice. You tell me. We've got gearbox action. Okay, so now the diff goes in. Yeah, so slide so that you in want from the top. So you want me to slide it in before you Yeah, put the grease on before we put the, this rear cap goes on. Okay. So I'm just making sure I've got those making cams sure. in, the, in the right way. So the twos are on the top. Wouldn't be the first person in. to put it in crooked. Put it in crooked? Yeah, I always put it in crooked. Oh dear. Yeah. Can't be helped. Wow. All right, so we just double check it here. Zoom, zoom, so people can see the two. Zoom, zoom. Some people can even paint them if you're hard of sight. So you'd see yep, the so two's two facing there. up. And, and just see the LD sure. on the box. That means it's a lay down dirt box. Yep. So that it generates the most rear traction in and the car. And make sure it's the same on the other side yeah, as well. Yeah, because you can. Because otherwise it'll be wonky. You can wonky and it does and it'll, disrupt it'll damage. the gears. Yes. Okay, so you're going to do the, the lubrications. Got my special application here. What's that? You like this tool? This is a it's gizmo. It's a bit of a gizmo, isn't it? It is a, exactly a gizmo. This is from the Nine Steps Range Beach. I don't know if you've used one before. So you, but it you is, put some, some dolps in there, and as you rotate it, it will just naturally distribute it, right? Yeah, and I don't want to pack it with grease. So you want everything just to have a nice little coating? Yeah. Okay. That'll do perfectly. That'll do? Okay. And that doesn't need to be reapplied only when you're rebuilding. Right. Does it, in fact, need to be... And all that does, like I said, it's not necessary, not everybody runs it. Yep. All that does is just take a little bit of the 
the heat out of the plastic so the gears last a bit longer. Yep. All the excess will fling off and go inside the case. Okay, so now we cap it off. Cap it off. With this gearbox case. Yep. What screws do you need for that? So that uses three by eights. Yep. Uh, at the end and three by tens in the middle. So three by eights. Three by tens. Okay, dokes. And again with the gearbox, you just want to make sure that you've got it all sitting down nice. Everything's pulling up. Yep. Straight. Three by tens. In the middle. Yep. Where is it? Oh, yeah. So the design of this with the cap, does that mean it's very easy to undo? Very the, easy to service because it's to a get, race to car. To get into the to diff. To get in and change, either change the diff height. Yep. Or in fact, uh, take the diff out so and you can work on it. service it, tune it, rebuild it, right. whatever. Okay. Easier than pulling out the whole gearbox and pulling the whole thing apart, isn't well, it? Well, four screws. Yeah. And it's, yeah, that's the beauty in that rear camber mount and this is that four screws and you can take the whole, you leave it, the gearbox in the car, but you take the diff out in the back. Right. Very nice. That's right. And like I said, with the, the gear diff, you're never going to have to touch this. Mm. Perfect for starting out racing. Yeah, very cool. Okay, so the next step is this bit over here. We're pretty zoomed in at the moment. What we're going to so be doing put on the motor mount and start putting together the slipper. Hush puppies. You like slipper? You have a look at that and Ooh. I'm going to get stuck into. Which bag are we on? We are on bag number four. If we finish this bag, this will be this will be something. Won't it? It's going to start to look like a buggy. Now, it will. once this box goes in, the arms are on, mate. We are like buggy. Hashtag buggy life. Yo, come on! I love slippers. Do you? Yeah. Now, in all seriousness, it is probably the biggest tuning aid of the off-road buggy. A lot of people really probably don't put enough time into their slippers because a nice consistent slipper feel doesn't matter whether you're running a seven and a half turn or a 27 and a half turn mm. johnson mm. you still want the slipper to work well so have you got any tricks about building a brand new slipper do you actually run it in in a special way no or you just Not drive slippers, it and just, then readjust just sort of it drive it and readjust it the first three batteries Yep. Probably going to need a lot of adjustment. Did I just see you pull out some turnbuckles with the ends on them already? <laughs> Stop it. What is this? What is this sorcery? It is. This, this is one of the most and painful this... jobs. And universals are all put no. together. Wow. I want to do an endurance with this car where you have to build it. Wow. No? Do an oh, endurance so race they'll build it in the race. That's right. Because this kit and I'm sure will be indicative of how long this video goes for. Yes. The episodes, but I reckon this is seriously going to be like a two or three hour build. Mm. And buggies from the racing ones usually take three hours just in the chassis. Then you've got shocks, installing electrics. All right, so we need this, a nice black motor mount. Hard anodized. That's oh. it. And then we need the spur guard, which is this one. Look how thick it is. It's chunky. This is going to take some serious heat. It's not going to move, is it? All right, so the spur guard. So the main thing with the slipper is to make sure you don't get any oil or dirt, uh, dirt, like any oil or grease on it. No, that's right. All right, so how about we screw on this, this guard on first, which takes these little, little screws. So they're two by eight um, countersunks. Here you go. Oh, thank you. Turnbuckles. That has made my day. I don't know anybody who enjoys building turnbuckles in the kit. No. No, it's a bit of luxury, isn't it? Let's get another one of these. Oh, oh. Beautiful CVDs. They could have just cheaped out and put dog bones. No. Beautiful. It's beautiful straight from the, the race car. I call it a race car. This is a race car. It is a race this car. Is straight from the top but I mean, car. A refined race car is expected to have CVDs in it, isn't it? Yeah, but do you remember back, and I, I take it back to the old days when I started in 1993, and I mean, the top line competition cars didn't mm. come with such things. No. 
They come no. with plastic drive shafts. Yes. The brand that I used to use. Yep. And then option it, thing. it was a third party. The company didn't even make them. It was a third party. Oh, that's um, right. Thing you had to buy the because you had to buy the diff halves. Yes. And the drive shafts. Yes. Okay, so now let's put this together. So I'm going to need some uh, three by eight countersunks. Wow, it just fits on. Thank you. Don't tell me you don't like that nail. The nail's pretty good, isn't it? Hey. I don't mind it at all. Are oh, you loading up for me? I'm loading you? up for you. You're getting the full rock star treatment. If we oh, had no. two, if I had two, we'd, I'd be double, we'd be tag teaming it. What, on this one piece? Yep. <laughs> hey, you'd be having bits at you. There you go. Ah, uh, there we go. All right. Now, something I do like to do mm -hmm. is compress the spring. Uh, Pre-compressing is... I don't know if it says that, but that is something I like to do when I build my slipper. No different to building. No, it doesn't, doesn't say that, but I mean, that's pretty much a, a standard thing, isn't it? Well, it's not. If you don't know, Beach, you don't know. No, that's true too. But and I mean, any, that works with any you know? brand, right? You crush the spring to basically run it in. You just crushed my hopes and dreams. Did I? No, generally you do. Oh. <laughs> Means it's working. All right, so I'm just going to nip these up. Can I say that? Not too late. And there we go. So there's our gearbox with the motor mount. It's in this really nice, stealthy ninja black. Ninja! Nin Ninjago. It's quite popular these days, isn't it? Now there's, I've seen people glue slipper pads in. Yeah. This is a spur gear. Yeah. I've seen people glue them in and people yep. do all sorts of things, but. What do you do? I usually just persist until I get it right. And you don't always get it right first time. Yeah. But it's a bit like building a sandwich. All right, so you just have to be careful to get onto the flats on the shaft, yeah. right? And you can see if you look through the back of the case here, you can see that it is located because it's only retained by the spur gear. Right. And we can see that it's in there and retained. Yeah. That's because you don't anyway. want to offset, right? No. It was offset, it'll just chew them out. So we'll put this one in. Yep. Is there any washers or shims in there? No. Good. Nope. Nope. So once you got that all together. So I'm sitting this one in and then the top pressure plate. Yeah. So you get your, you your pressure plate and then you get your spring, then which you're going to pre print. Tension? Are yeah. you going to tension so that I'll up? hold that and make sure it doesn't pop apart. So show everyone how you That's, tension that up. So I've got my handy pliers here. Yeah. And I'm just going to... Just tension it there. Give it a few squeezes. That's yep. it. And that's it. You're done. All right. All right, yep. now we've got a, uh, the spring collar. We've got a hat. Have we? I'm just free balling here. Oh, yeah? So just, and, then, and then your favorite type of nylon nut. Yeah, nylon. Let's get this yep. ring of security. And in the manual, it just indicates... Hey, man, wow. Oh, hang on, that's, that's just spinning. So the... Well, hold it. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> so do it up until you've got about one mil of thread left. Thread? Uh, yeah, thread hanging out the end. And then we'll just adjust the slipper so that when the car accelerates from a dead stop, there is a small amount of slip. That's what you want. And it depends, and that's the thing, it varies on every surface. Yep. So, and what I like, a really good indication that you've done a good job with the slipper is yeah. how true the spur gear is running. You know, and this has never slipped yet, but have a look how straight that is. Yeah, because it's just basically floating between two pads, right? Yeah, that's it. So you've done a really good job if it's all running nice and smooth, and it's going to give us a nice gear mesh as well. Yeah, you're welcome. Not going to have any low or high spots. Hmm. All right, so there's a gearbox. That's the box. Is it a gearbox or is it a transmission? Oh, I don't know. Doesn't change. But gears. I guess, I guess that's it. Are we going to call this? No, let's get a little. Oh, you want to keep going? How oh. long have we been going for? We've been going for hour fifteen. If we can just marry this. Excuse me. If we can marry it. All right, let's marry it. Can All right, we marry so that's, it? A, that's the next step. If okay. we can marry this gearbox so that's on this step thing, here this we can call episode one. Okay, so this is step eight. Gearbox universal drive shaft installation. So we're going to put the, the rear shock tower on. Yep. So that's just going to take uh, four screws. You've got uh, three by tens on the top, three by eighteens on the bottom. Three by tens on the top. Are they button heads? They are button heads. And three by eighteens on the bottom. Yep. Yeah. Yep. 
Did I lose the driver? Oh, this guy. This guy. What do you mean? I haven't taken anything. How you, about... You took the driver. I'll get the chassis ready right here. We've got the unis there. I'll stick the unis in. But this needs bearings, right? 3 by 10s on the top, did you say? Where do I find the bearings? 3 by 10s on the top? 3 by 10s on the top. 3 by 18s on the bottom. Wow. I'm just going to pinch a couple of bearings. So all the bearings are 3 by 10s, are they? Uh, oh, not three, wasn't it? Eight by tens. No, I should say five by tens. Sorry, yeah. Five by ten by five. All right, so let's just slap this in here. It is a redesigned rear hub, though. Is it? Yeah. Oh, it's fatter. Yeah, it's much stronger. All right, so we've got our drive shaft is in, and the hubs. So I've got the shock tower on. So gearbox is going to be held on with six screws. Yeah. And they're all three by eights. They are three by eights. Mm. What oh, about actually, the I was a bit too fast there. There should be some shims that go in here. That's what these shims are for, yeah. I was ahead of myself. And so I need for, four. That is for different um, width spaces. So you can change the, the pills on the race, on the high level car. And right. And you can get different track widths on the rear. Right. When you get different track widths, you need to change the width of your length of your drive shaft. Right. And you do it with those okay. shims. Easy. Wow. You make it seem easy. That's what I like about working with you, BJ. You just make everything just a dream. That's right, don't I? That's a bit creepy. <laughs> Not that kind of dream. Uh, bloody nightmare. So a good thing too is in the manual, and then, well, they talk about how you can take apart the dry shaft and how you can rebuild them. And there you go. That'll probably be easier since you can see now. What are you I doing? can't see. You can't see? Well, that would go in front of here, wouldn't it? Yeah. Oh. You can marry it. Oh. I'm just going to get some screws ready. Two, four, six. Oh. It's all floppy. It was floppy. It's limp. All right. What have Thank you done? You. There we go. What have you done to my it buggy? Back. It's all I'm limp. Bringing it back. I'm bringing it back. All right. So we've got the six screws here. All right. This one. Oh. Oh, quick reloads. What's going on here? Come on. It's all happening, isn't it? That is. It's teamwork. There's no I in T. There's a U in something though. A U? A U. <laughs> a U turn? No U turns here, mate. We're going forward. I can't wait. I can't wait to smell a burning Mabuchi. <laughs> no? Is it just uh, me or just. You know, some people just. They can smell Nan's apple pie or Mum's roast. Yeah, from two yeah. blocks away. Yeah, I, I, I smell a burning Mabuchi. <laughs> a nice car. Can I change? I like the knurl. It's beautiful, Thank isn't you. it? Sorry, I didn't mean to give you inferior tools. I was just trying to give you the hurry up. <laughs> hey? Yes, I understand. I'm trying to make it so that what? I don't cover up everything. It's like it's black, mm. right? So it's pretty hard to see what I'm doing. Well, it's got silver bits. Is it? I'm glad that we didn't use the black mat. Black mat? I've stolen the black mat. Mate, you know, <laughs> yeah. never see it again. I love that thing. Do you? I actually want Goes with you everywhere. I want an orange one. Is there an orange one? Well, I want, I want one. You want one? We could request one. Well, I think we're going to have to. Oh, I'm getting like tired fingers now. Oh my God, you've done four screws, mate. Come on. It's more than four screws. Six, Six screws. All right. Just, All right, I'm just doing the little. Just walk this way. I've got to, just got to check your Henway. <laughs> All right, there we go. That's where we're at. All right, so I've got drive shafts popping out. Popping out. All right, so let's just pop them back. You're going to put a camber link on. Yep, okay. Let me get these in. Oh, I'm dropping everything now. Under there like that. Does it? I'm sure of it. Well, I could be wrong. The manual. What's Manuel say? I'm going to have to change. Oh, it's going to fall All right, that's in, again. that's in, that's in, that's in, that's in. Yeah, but we're going to flop it around. Yeah, yeah, well, let's try not to flop it around. All right, what have we got now? Camber links. All right, so that faces this way. 
And you see how it's got those, hang on. Big, big screws. Where's this guy? Right there. Yeah. So we need, I guess screwed in through the top. Three by 22s. Yeah, three by 22s. Here's some I prepared for you earlier. Oh, go baby. I love how it just falls together. No? It's pretty good, isn't it? There's no pushing or lining up. Can you put the, look at that, pre-made Campbell links. So you want me to just pop them on? Yep. So the, the Campbell links have got a line in them. Which way are you putting it? I don't know. You just got to pick away, don't you? And well, let's look at the instructions. The instructions and say... And you've got to commit. All right, so the instructions say they have the line this way. Now, the reason you want to put them all in the same direction is so that when you're adjusting them, you know which way to, t to spin them all, right? Yeah, because the last thing you want is to be doing up one side and undoing the other side. That's right. So the instructions say this way. Is that what you did? Yeah. You got it on? And we go... That is Kapop. episode one. Where's my box? Here's your muscles, Beige. I've got no muscles. And there we go. This is what we got. Have a look at that, people. That is half a buggy built in about an hour. That's it. Hey, we got the diff, the gearbox, the steering bell crank, and the rear arms on. Yep. And I like the way you assemble those drive shafts. They are beautiful. You're welcome. Fantastic. Well, that is the Yokomo RO, RO 1.0 build. That's right. And that's part one. And we'll be back for part two. We certainly will, guys. I'm right. Brett from Hearns, and that's BJ. And thanks for watching. See you.